Reaper makes a variety of very attractive unpainted Dryad miniatures, but the prices can run quite high on them. $9, $7, $5. The cheapest is this Elven Dryad in the plastic bones format, but she is lugging a planted tree around with her, which makes her really ineffective since she has to use her free action to plant the tree and her move action to climb up, not to mention the encumbrance penalties to movement. Yeah, this kind of miniature drives me nuts, and Reaper does this entirely too often. Like this Reaper rat catcher who needs a storm giant's base just because he's got this stupid cage next to him, or this alcoholic dwarf who needs to drag a keg of beer with him everywhere he goes. This guy needs a ring of regeneration just for his liver damage alone. But gripes about extra miniature props aside, going to Reaper for dryads is going to run you some serious money, and they are still unpainted. Looking at the Wizards of the Coast pre-painted dryad, you can pick one up for two dollars and fifty cents before shipping. But why would you? It is Dr. Pimple Popper level disgusting. Is that a beautiful fairy of the woods? Or is it Helga from Hey Arnold wearing a dress made out of potato salad? Because I think it's Helga from Hey Arnold wearing a dress made out of potato salad. Let me tell you how to bypass all these crappy options and get yourself some of these awesome dryad miniatures for only fifty cents a piece. Go to trollandtoad.com and get yourself some of these black orchid hero clicks miniatures that are only forty nine cents before shipping. They've got a few left on Cool Stuff Inc. also for the same price. Black Orchid is a sexy vine-covered hero lady who makes a perfect dryad. You're going to want to take that Heroclix miniature off its goofy Heroclix base, and the quickest way I've found is to put the base in a vise and use a hammer and chisel to separate them. Then a quick dip into some acetone and a vigorous scrub-a-dub with an old toothbrush will take that awful Chinese child labor paint job right off. This shouldn't take you longer than 90 seconds per miniature. Don't leave your clicks in the acetone too long or they will get soft on you. I like to glue mine to a mysterious copper disc that is most certainly not legal tender protected by any kind of defacement laws. Then I add a little PVA glue and craft sand to flock it and let it sit to dry. Once dry, I'm going to skip priming them as they are plastic and I don't want to work all the way up from black. I don't have any gray on hand and plus it's too nasty outside weather-wise to use a spray can. So I just added a couple thin layers of old ivy mixed with some black. Starting with any dark green color will work just as well though. I then added highlights with a lighter green on the breast, top of the head, shoulders, top of the legs. And lastly I dry brushed the lightest green over the vine details on her shoulders, breasts, and limbs, as well as painting and dry brushing on the base. Overall this is a very easy paint job to do well. One other thing that's noteworthy is that this miniature can also be a stand-in for vine or needle blights. Currently the needle blight goes for six to seven bucks online and there is no vine blight available until January of 2019 when it'll come out as part of a nine dollar set. So even if you don't need dryads, you might want to think about repainting some of these black orchids for use as blights in your game. As always you can visit us on Facebook. If you'd like to support the channel please consider making a donation to my GoFundMe campaign. The links for both are in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.